Welcome to part 2 of the RD1 Getting Started video. In settings we have the read button which will allow you to import settings directly from the device into the software. And anytime you make a change to the settings it will not be applied until you hit the program button to store it in the device. The device will say saving data until it's finished saving all the changes that you have made. So at this time we're going to go ahead and plug the device in and you'll notice it will auto connect for you and will automatically take you to the layout page with the current layout that's on the device and all of the current settings that are on the device. Now this is actually how it comes from HR Tuning. You can clear all to clear all pages and start fresh. You'll see that nothing is on the display now and you can begin to drag and drop any items that you want to see on the display. Now as you begin to add items to the screen and move them around, resize them, fit them how you want, in order to save that data to the display you need to hit the save layout button. Once you've saved your layout to the device, you're free to disconnect and manipulate layouts at will, but make sure you save them because once you connect again, it'll import what's currently on the screen. And also, if you clear the display in real time and decide that you want to revert to what you saved before, all you have to do is uh, hit the revert button and you're good to go. It'll load back up with the last thing that was saved. Now, the dot at the top of the gauge is how you select it, which populates info on the right-hand side. You can use the arrow keys to move it around or drag it, you know, resize it, and you can hit the delete key to delete the item completely. Now if you want to select multiple items, all you have to do is shift click your other items. And it will add it to the selection. You can drag them around. And as I mentioned, when a single item is highlighted, you just hit delete to get rid of it. So let's go through some gauge setup and manipulation. As I said, drag and drop, alt, click, and drag. We'll resize the display to anything you want. And then uh, these populated items on the right allow you to pick your warning triggers, your gauge styles, increment styles, needle styles, and the type of item that you want to be displayed. You'll notice when you select your item that it populates the minimum and maximum value accordingly and you can adjust if you wanted to say go to a lower value instead. For the gauge item specifically we actually have a segment section. You can add how many segments you want in between the start and the stop of the gauge. Uh, for this we're going to 9000 so I chose 9 as an end segment. And you'll see that as you change the style of gauge, it'll actually augment and offset those exactly to the way the gauge is now shaped or formed. So you can begin to see how easy it is to manipulate and set up these gauges to be exactly what you want to see on the screen. So let's take this gauge and manipulate it into something completely different. We'll uh, pull it up here. I'm going to go with an air fuel gauge. So we'll give it an end segment of 20 and a start segment of 10. And we'll figure out how many spaces we need in between here. Six uh, seems to be a little off. Let's go for four. And now you have increments of two, which is perfect for an air fuel gauge. Now all we do now is select calculated O2 as the input type. Automatically switches minimum to 10 and maximum to 20 for you. If you wanted it to be set up different you could do that. But this would now act as an air fuel gauge sweeping back and forth as you drive around. Let's now take a look at text items. Note that you do have to click the left side of a text item box to get it to drag around. 
If you click the right hand side it will deselect it because you can put it in front of other items and you may want to get to the items behind it easily. Now to enter a custom text label just type into the text box while custom is selected as a type and any type of font that you choose from here on out the box will render the size of what the text would be so that you can easily place it on the screen. Now this applies to the left to right and the top to bottom direction of the text. What you'll notice is slightly different when you actually select an item to display on the text. The text box will always be the same size but it will render the name of the item that you are trying to show inside of the box. In this case RPM. Now as we move it around or as we select different types for it, it's going to stay the same size. That makes it a little harder to place where you want. However, because text can be different sizes, that's the only way that we can represent what it actually means. Now the custom text label that you have entered will only show up when you actually have custom selected as the type. Now let's take an in-depth look at the bar graph. You can click anywhere inside the bar graph to highlight it and alt click and drag to manipulate the size of the item. Now much like the gauge when you select a specific type it will actually populate the minimum and maximum values for you. The cool thing about a bar graph is if you set the minimum and maximum to the same it'll actually fill the whole entire thing at that value. Now if you set the maximum higher than the minimum it's going to start to populate at the beginning and work its way up to the max. In this case it would start to fill at 100 RPM and it would be filled completely at 500 RPM. Now if we wanted to make attack out of bar graphs we could easily set the minimum and maximum to 500, duplicate the item, put it next to it and set it to say a thousand. Then the first item would light up at 500 and the second one would light up at a thousand. This makes it very easy to make custom shaped tacks. Now with a light you click more in the center to highlight it and it's still alt and drag to resize. You can easily set up a text label for the light by choosing a type and then choosing show item text. Or you can add your own text item, set it to any font, you can set it left to right or top to bottom and set it next to the light or above or below the light or even inside of the light to represent the light any way you want. One very cool feature we're implementing here is the templates, which allows you to import pre-done templates of tax, air fill ratio gauges, and all sorts of other things that are easy to get into the software, move around and manipulate without having to spend too much time. With the templates, it'll allow you to go to a different page and import a different one so that maybe you have a race set up to 10,000 on one page, and on the other page, you have a street set up to 9. Now you can clear page 2, and your template on page 1 will still be there. And you can clear all to start again from scratch. Another cool thing we can do is take a bar graph and resize it into a box that can actually house a text item to make it look a little better than just having text playing on your screen. In this case, uh, let's do air fuel ratio. Now you can actually set the box up to go back and forth as well, but you don't have to. Now with the lights, we can actually make a circle and say put gear inside of it as a gear indicator that might serve as a middle ground on your display that you could center things around. 
and we can also use the bars and resize them to kind of make a wall or a barrier between sections on the display. Now that makes it nice and neat. You can organize things in different sections and uh, it'll be a little different than just having stuff here and there. Now I quickly want to take you over the sensor breakpoint layout. For voltage we have 0 to 5 volts and for the real values we have 0 to 3200. Now these will be interpolated. Let's say uh, you have 2.5 volts. It would end up being 1600 because of the way you have this laid out. For nonlinear items, we have up to 15 breakpoints you can set voltage and real values for. When you're done, simply go to the settings page and hit the program button and your display will say saving data until it's done saving. When you're ready to use it, simply go to the layout, add a new item, and set the type to your programmable sensor. In this case, as a text, it would say 1600 at 2.5 volts, just like we said before. Thanks for watching, and we hope to have more videos soon.